So, uh, Dutch. Dave. Let's talk about movie BS. Movie BS. We've all watched the movies. We've all seen it. I like movies. Oh, I love movies. I like movie quotes. How, yeah, you cannot not... <laughs> Imagine living your life without quotes from movies. Dude, I live on them. Yes. My teenage kids are watching it at home now because they uh, are just now getting to understand the references. Check. You know? Like, oh, that's where that comes from. Well, any, kind of, any class you take from me, man, it's movie quote after movie quote after movie quote. So I'm all about it. So. In the movies, though, you guys are always portrayed... Wildly different from one extreme to the other. When you mentioned you guys, you're talking about any kind of tier one special mission unit kind of thing. And uh, I think you're right. There's a couple of movies there that don't get it right at all. And there's a couple of movies, at least one that I know of, that, that to me gets it right. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, we're going to talk about that when we come back. So when it comes to movie BS, you know, there's a lot of interesting things you can talk about. And we're going to... Hey, guys. Ah! Oh. Whoa. It happens bro. fast. Whoa. You have to attack and come from any direction at any time. And if it happens to you, you're going to want to have legal protection, right? Whoa. In the event of a self-defense incident, you have to use your weapon, you know, for that intended purpose. There's going to be a second fight coming, guys. And at CCW Safe, they have this down to a science. They will hand select your legal team as well as send out an investigator to do an independent investigation on your behalf. So check them out in the description below because uh, you just never know what's going to happen. True. Yeah, I know. All right, hey, cool. I'm out. <laughs> Cheers, man. Always better to have and not need than need and not have. And not have. So right. I'm going to start with a cool movie that I know you know. I dig the movie, too. I dig it. Uh, it's called Sicario. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Cool movie, right? Yeah, great movie. Well, Josh Brolin, little uh, Benicio Del Toro. Right? Yeah, yeah. Cool movie about... Uh, completely fictional accounts that that DOD and some sort of other government agency is going to go across the border or cause trouble and do stuff like that because as far as I know, boys and girls, that doesn't happen. Yeah. No. One of the scenes in particular I'm talking about is uh, they're all getting a briefing. Right? Brolin rolls in, they're doing a brief, and there's a whole bunch of cats up there. There's We got marshals up there, we got other government agencies, and surprisingly enough, there's some sort of mysterious Delta guys there. Yeah. And the guy says, hey, Delta guys, stand up for us, please. And they stand up. They're all bearded. And and he says, Jack Diesel. Yeah, right. Yeah. He says, he stand, stand up so we know who to hide behind. Yeah. And that's really all you hear from them. That's it. They're that's done. it. Yeah, yeah, so all bearded, ridiculous looking. Um, uh, I would take I would take that over what Regiment gets. The majority of all the movies you see Regiment in, they're very poorly portrayed. And the majority. I mean, there's, there's like one, two percent where it's like really good. But okay, case in point, Lone Survivor, great movie. Is it? I, I like it for for the entertainment value. I like it. It's a good movie. But the movie I thought was a good movie. However, at the end of it all, you know, they show regiment guys coming in, all dressed head to toe in black. I've never been issued a pair of black gear. You weren't in the regiment ninja no. unit. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. The, uh, the reconnaissance attachment. How, how were they moving in that movie too? Oh, they was all hut, hut, hut. Yeah, it was like, right. Helicopters land and dudes in black just get off and run everywhere. Hmm. You know, and then he's suddenly saved. What they didn't tell you was the real story behind that. Regiment guys that went in for that, they walked for over seventy-two hours Gosh. to get into that, and they went they went Winchester and all their water, right, getting in. Uh, for those of you who aren't uh, schooled into Army vernacular, Winchester means gone, out of it. Usually out. it's a description in when I lose all my ammo. ammo. Yeah. Usually it's usually an aircraft that says, I'm Winchester on this, so I got to go back and get uh, plus up. But there you go. Yeah. So they were out of everything, and they were down to IVs, but they were out of catheters. So, uh, yeah, they were administering what remaining fluids they had um, anally. Which is a technique. It's not a, it's not a, well, they don't have catheters. They couldn't push it into the veins. So it's, it's better than drinking it. All right, so. The absorption rate's higher. Help, help me out here. We're talking, we're talking about an IV enema. Enema. enema yeah, enema, basically. Enema. Yeah. You like how I said that? Enema? Enema. enema we're enema. talking about an IV enema. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Good grief. Yeah. God bless you guys. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't know that. I wasn't, luckily, I wasn't part of that. I wasn't there either? Yeah. Nope. Uh, I was back in the States during that, that whole debacle. Yeah. What else about that? You good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. But it always shows regiment dudes 
head to toe in black, hut, 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 across the desert. I want to go to 13 Hours, where they depict a couple of SMUs, dudes that come from Tripoli, and they're just bearded. They don't say a word, pretty much. They're <laughs> yeah. bearded, heavy, armored up, and they, uh, big beard. And the one guy says, I'm here to destroy all the sensitive paperwork yeah, or something yeah. downstairs. Yeah, items, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's not true. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they, they don't depict them horribly, but they don't depict them well either. So, I, I, But it, it does kind of go hand in hand. My engagement a lot of times, if, if you don't know the guys, if you know the guys, you're tight with them and you ham it up, right? But been around a lot of other SMU guys I didn't know, and they're very close-knit and they're very quiet, right? And uh, this, this particular LNO that uh, that I was working with overseas, uh, great guy, great human being. But we're in his hot wash. And the hot wash is after the events unfold for the for the evening, you all come back and you have a, a very grown-up discussion about what went right, what went wrong, what could have went better. Commonly known as an after-action review. Mm-hmm. Well, we often say, AARs or hot wash. hot wash. But we're in there and uh, there's just a lot of emotions running high and a lot of back and forth chatter that was needless. And he just looked at me. It's where I got the acronym WAIT from. WAIT, W A I T. Why am I talking? <laughs> I was like, that's pretty poignant. Like, do I have something to add? Is it relevant to the conversation? Is it my turn to talk? And there's a whole list of it, but. Uh, yeah, is it worth speaking right now, right? Because you, right. you better add something good in there. Right. But we would often tell guys that just got there, uh, you don't, don't open your mouth for a whole year, pretty much. Yeah. You shut your mouth for a year, and then finally, you know, you can start saying something smart in there. But, yeah, if, you, if you're a brand new guy, yeah, I, I can understand. I've never heard that acronym before, but I, I dig that, yeah. Yeah. Shut your mouth. Absorb. If it's if it's right on time and real poignant, then obviously it needs to bring it up. Or, or talk to your boss. Yeah. We used to tell the young guys, hey, bro, you need to be on receive mode. 100%. Not transmit. You're on receive and receive only. 100%. 100%, 100%. You know, yeah. Keep your uppers and lowers together. Yeah. So, on, the, on the movie scene, though, yeah, there's a lot they get right. A lot? There's a lot of movies out there that... we go with a, a little. Okay. I'll I, go with that. Have you seen the Navy movie Act of Valor? I have. That's pretty... I, I like that movie. Yeah. The real Navy SEALs are actors in this film. Mm-hmm. So it can get a little clunky, but... Acting wise, get a little clunky, but they do stuff that's very rangerish to me. Yep. Right. There's a there's a um, there's a jump insertion. Is I think a static line too. Even I, I don't know if it's static line or not, but there's an insertion. They go through the jungle. They do some CQB. Uh, now there's also parts in that that absolutely suck, but I, I dug it. I thought it was all right. Yeah. I I like the uh, you know the the SB22 guys, the special boat teams. Oh, yeah. In that movie. They come around the corner and they're just laying into the guns. I actually had I, I had an experience like that. Uh, we flew to Taji. We got on SB-22 boats. We drove for like an hour up the Tigris to hit this target. And while we were in film, because, you know, there's four boats. So I guess we're, two boats are debarking. The other two are pulling security. And across the river, we got lit up by an RPK. And those boys do not, they don't miss a beat. Is that right? They went right to it? Oh, man. But after the, before that casing ever hit the ground from the first round of the RPK. Drop the hammer? Oh, the, yeah. The mini guns and twin twin 240s, they were just wrecking shop. I think in Active Valor, though, they pretty much they pump them up, right? I heard from a professional friend of mine, a.k.a. Door, that SB-22 guys don't do a whole lot. Really? So they pumped them up in Active Valor. It was pretty oh, cool, though. Yeah. So cool. I know for me they were there. They <laughs> good. They dropped the hammer. Good dude. It was, it was good. That we got AC one thirty involved that night. It was it was a hell of a night. Nice. It was nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, so a movie I think that they get it right, or partially right, is Black Hawk Down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously this is n- almost new, right? Is it almost it's almost new as Rangers now working with this tier one element, right? Yeah. Uh, and there's a scene in there where they see a guy with, uh, he's got his blood type on his boots, and they say, don't do that, it's bad juju, the rangers think that. And then it's uh, plates in the front, plates in the rear. Yeah, I don't need plates in the back. I'm not, I'm not running away Don't from plan to run fight. away, the guy says, right? right, right. That's stupid, right? Yeah, right? And then the final, the, the killer is the night vision. Yep. They're watching these defo guys put night vision into their bags. And what's the ranger guy say? You don't need that shit. It's a daytime mission. It's a daytime mission. I, so again, better to have CCW safe. Better to have and not need than need not have. True story. So you're, you're going to carry this. How much How much difference in weight is it? 
Come on now. Yep. So let's you know toughen up and carry the stuff you need. Talking about uh, uncommon valor and all the active seals that were in there. Active valor. Active valor. Thank you. Um, Black Hawk Down also had active rangers in it. No way. All the fast rope scenes you see what in there that? were all out of uh, Bico three seven five. How about that? Which was the original company for uh, for Mo- Gothic Serpent Mo. Yeah. Yep. Gothic Serpent Moog. Battle of the Black Sea, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But all those all those scenes, those are all those are all active duty. That's cool. Regiment duty. I think they know, right? I mean, it's hard to when you see the RPGs in that movie, it's RPGs don't go psh, psh, psh. they don't do that. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I don't know how I don't know how you do that as a movie maker. Boom boom. That's how they really are. Boom and boom, right? Well yeah. it's boom. Um but yeah, but I, I love the interaction, honestly. Um, the rangers look to the the much more mature force and they and they end up taking techniques and tactics from them mm-hmm. uh, you see the the tier one force leading them through the streets at points and times uh, so I, I think it's pretty legit that's pretty cool and uh, I think the way they portrayed certainly Shugart and Gordon uh, was was a good portrayal mm-hmm. uh, these two awesome operators lose their life uh, to give it to the for the crews of the uh, uh, the aircraft it's just yeah, I mean, if you read those uh, Medal of Honor citations, they're, you know, I think one of the last pieces of, of I'm, I'm not sure which operator it was, Gordon or Shugard, but it's the Medal of Honor citation, which you can find uh, on open source, that he, he he expended all of his rifle magazine. Winchester. Uh, went Winchester on his all his rifles, and he pulled his pistol and waded into the enemy. Uh, you know, knowing, I'm getting goose right now, knowing that you, you pulled your pistol you're going in there and you're going to die, but I'm going to kill as many as I can. And that yeah. was, uh, it's pretty impressive. And they did a pretty good job there. I know that, that whole movie, I think for me is just one, that was a turning point between the working relationship between it was. the regiment and the- In real life it was a turning point too. It yeah, really was. H- huge turning point. I mean, think about it. That's when, uh, that's when all the, the small unit exchanges really started picking up the, you know, the, the, I don't know how many times we went to brag to come up there and, and, and train, you know, and get professionalized by, you know, your your big brother for us. Anytime, you know? any anytime in theater as well, we would grab men of your your, your men mm-hmm. down there on the street and come up. Let's train. Let's talk about how we're going to climb over um, yep. walls. Let's talk yep. about how we're going to do hand hand combat. Let's talk about how we're going to do all these things. And yeah, we'd get together with them all the time. Yeah, that was good. Plus, you got to think about where where do where does a tier level one element recruit from? What? Well, they recruited from Rangers. Yeah. So. It's a huge, huge population of Rangers there. Yep. 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 You know, uh, trivia, like random trivia. Uh, Black Hawk Down was filmed in Morocco. Okay. Random random trivia. Good job. Yep. You're welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you know, talking about getting things right and turning points and professionalizing the force and, and, and everything from there, right? I think one thing that, uh, and it's, it's not really movie stuff, but it kind of goes into the good instead of the bad, is uh, look at all the Army programs out there now that started in Ranger Regiment. You know, the Army, modern, the modern Army Combatants Program started in Ranger Regiment. You know, started at 275 up there. You know, look at the Team Leader course, you know, and, and how that's now become, you know, a Army-wide program. Like, the professional development side of the house has been huge for what the Army's adopted out of Regiment cool. and... For those of you who don't know, too, there was a general named Abrams, and he developed what was called the Abrams Charter. He observed what was going on in the Ranger Regiment and the battalions and said, what you need to do, what I needed to do as a senior non-commissioned officer in one of those elements is to leave mm-hmm. that element and populate into a regular Army unit and give them the same kind of professionalism that you have here in the regiment, go out and do great things, and then come back and mm-hmm. keep serving in the regiment. Uh, now that didn't always happen, mind you, because <laughs> you as a senior non-commissioned officer or me as a senior non-commissioned officer in the Rangers, did you want to leave? No. No, you didn't want to go, right? Uh-uh. So you had the opportunity to homestead some, and you could stay, but that was a that was a thing that obviously that general came down and said, hey, these men are doing great things. You should walk away, populate that those great things into the regular vanilla forces, and then come back and, and then finish out your career. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Abram Charter, that's, that was that. So... This last segment, brought to you by CCW Safe, was just talking about, you know, just BSing about movies, how they get it wrong, how they get it right. And oh, believe me, Dave and I 
can sit here and talk about all kinds of other movies too. And maybe another time we will. But as for now, we're going to leave you. But before you go, check out the description below for the War Room, which you need to be a part of. Hit that like button, smash the bell, get fed by Tactical Hive. And until next time. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Dave and Dutch for Tactical Hive. Cheers. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.